It's yeah. like even the artists back in the day when the record labels meant something, uh, like I mentioned, Beatles, <laughs> Bowie, etc., Zeppelin, they all got to the point where this isn't working for us. We want to be in control of this more. Yeah. We want to make the money that's... You're making all the money. <coughs> Where's yeah. our cut? Mm. Why am I broke? Mm. And I'm the biggest star in the world. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. well, that's examples of record labels fucking artists. I mean, look, it's it's common knowledge that the, the, uh, the model of a record label is to take advantage of the artist. Taking advantage of them and, um, what's the word, like, just, just generally just taking advantage of the situation is different to fucking them, taking more than you're contractually entitled, right? Um, but record labels have been fucking artists since they were record labels and artists. So <laughs> that situation, and it's easy. The more money you make, the more money there is to move around. Well, you're out. in posi this position now. You're not with a label now. You're not with the band anymore. Mm -hmm. You're doing your own thing. How are you doing it differently? What's the new model for you? Well, I'm sort of in the middle of figuring that out. Um, the main, the, the, the short answer is advertising. Um, someone's got to pay for your shit. Right? Uh, when you put up a video on YouTube or Vivo, there's an ad in front of it that creates a revenue. If you own the video, you get the money. You, you set up an account with Vivo and it's a very simple transaction. That's having ownership and selling your product to your audience and getting money from it. The money happens to come from the advertising company that pops a 30 second spot before your video. It's amazing how quickly there are, there are artists who do, some of, the, some of the people who make the most money on YouTube are cover artists who get 30 million views for doing a cover of a Pink song and they do a fully, a full production of them singing someone else's song, but they've, they've been doing it, it's consistency, quality content of what they do and everyone just knows on Monday morning I can tune in, I can see her in her next and song. Whoever wrote the song, mm. they're getting their cut. And they get their cut. We, you wish you'd done that with free hugs. <laughs> I wish they didn't have that system in place. Yeah. That was the thing. It was like, you know, if you see the social network and Facebook and all of the, and YouTube, all the, all the companies that start up, they say, we're going to figure out, we're going to invest for a few years because we know that at the end, the, the, the pot is going to be huge, but mm. we're not going to worry about monetizing it for a few years. So there wasn't any money to go around. YouTube that wasn't really... That out yet, no, yeah. there weren't In fact, ads. Google didn't own YouTube yet at that point. That's yeah. why they bought it. Yeah. One of the reasons YouTube they didn't it. have ads for the first few years and yeah. they purposefully did that because they wanted it to be cool. Then once you get addicted to YouTube and it's the go-to spot, you put the ads on, no one's going to change channels. They're just mm. going to keep going to YouTube. And then they brought in the fingerprinting where they say, we, we can recognize the song and the songwriters will get a cut or yeah. whoever owns the copyright. All of the, and that's, yeah, and, that's, yeah. and, the, and there are still, like, there are lots of ways to make money by, uh, it's not plagiarizing, it's um, you can just it's use a person's song, make a different video for it, and you get 50% yeah. instead of 100%. But one of the things is, thing. like you did with all the same in Free Hugs, mm. you made a, a video that was a call to action. People did their own versions, and they used your song as mm. a soundtrack. They used your copyright to do their own versions of it. Yeah, that, at that time, that monetization it wasn't It wasn't, in but effect, if you did yeah. that now... Oh, if you did it now, it'd be genius. Yes. Yeah, Because yeah. there were so many <coughs> satires and rip-offs yeah. and you know, look-alike versions. Yeah, intellectual property, owning your prop, owning, own, ownership, owning your content is the most important thing. And, uh, you know, the thing is, the market is endless now. Everyone can find, that's why the, the independent artist is becoming much more empowered because the audience is able to search for what they want, they're able to find it, whereas before it was literally the, the record label pipeline. It's, it's a slow process to a true transition where everyone's going to understand they can find it at the click of a button and know how to do it. But people are already doing it and artists are making a lot of money by doing that. But in coming back into your question, which is how do you do it in the future and make money off it, it comes down to ownership and, and, and having something that's really good. Having something that's really good and then spending the amount, the, the time to make it making a product that has that emotional ability to impinge on your audience so that they want to see it over and over again. Well, the big challenge here, and the same is true with film, the one thing the record labels, the companies do, is they market and they distribute, yeah. which is the hard part. Yeah. Which is what the artist doesn't really well, want to be doing. that's true, but if you, want to, if you want to go to that level of distribution and marketing, if you want to market and sell your stuff online, people do buy downloads to a degree. If you own 100% of the master, you can make a living off selling the... the and if you, if you have a really cool viral video for your song, you got a little click, uh, link that says click here to buy the song. You could be song. Gangnam Style. Yeah, you, you could be Gangnam Style. You could easily do that. And that's a that's life-altering amount of money for one song. One guy did it perfectly, and that's, that's one perfect example. If you do it on a small scale, where, for example, uh, you have YouTube subscribers and, you know, ten, let's say 10,000 people, for example, and they tune in once a week to hear your song, and you spend 
I'm just uh, this isn't a business plan of mine, but it would p be perfectly fine and it would work really good. If you were a guy with a guitar and you write your songs and they're great and you know how to run Pro Tools a little bit to just do a double guitar track and some harmonies and it's just you and your guitar and really beautiful songs and 10,000 people love your music and they want to tune in every Monday and hear your new song and you spend the week putting that song together and then you make a little viral video of you singing it wherever. Maybe you actually spend time to do a decent production. You pop it on YouTube, 10,000 people see it. Let's say 1,000 people actually go and click the 99 cent link download for PayPal, not even iTunes. You say, buy it direct from me. Mm -hmm. $1,000 a week. That's a good living. Mm. I mean, that you, you can't go and buy houses with it, but that's a good start. And then it just continues to grow and to grow, especially if you're consistent. What are they gonna do? They're gonna share the videos with their friends. They're gonna share the songs. They're probably gonna illegally share the songs. Fucking who cares? Just keep building the brand, build the, the value of your content and own the content so that when the value gets cashed in on each week, you get the money. Well, this is one of the business models where let people illegally download or you give them the right to download or to share it. You're not worried about the money there. Mm. In fact, we did this with your very first EP, if you recall. You were gonna put Feel free oh, to copy yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And I said, for non-commercial use. Yeah. <laughs> I made sure we just added that little line. Yeah. Um, but that's the new model. If, if people are going to torrent and share things anyway, do it anyway, let them do it mm. and find another way to get them to want to give you the money. Yeah. And one, there's one way of like, let them want to give you the money. Merchandising is great for that. If you create a brand, your music out there, people are looking at it and seeing it and you've got your cool logos and your artwork and whatever and you say, hey, click here to buy the t-shirt or the poster or the mug or whatever the hell is your merchandise or your bangles. There's gonna be a few people that really like it and they wanna go buy it and they buy it and you get the money and that's great. Um, the other side of it is the advertising revenue where people simply, they come in and they say, we like what you do, we recognize the monetary value that it has, we would like to give you some of that money to put our product in front of your thing. That's it. And then you so get paid. This is the thin end of the wedge for some artists though. I don't want to be a commercial artist in terms of having a sports drink in my video or writing songs that have this commercial, you know. Well, it's, that's the thing. It's, it's just because you, for like the, the, the most common place to put it on is uh, Vivo from YouTube. Uh, if you have an ad in front of your uh, uh, video, you, I, I don't even know if you get to choose the exact ad. Maybe they, they choose the demographic that goes up. Yeah, you can't choose the exact ad. But that ad, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that that ad is affiliated with your product. It's just an ad. No one's gonna look at my next song and if there's an ad for hemorrhoid cream, they're not gonna be like, oh, that's questionable. What does that mean about Shim? They're like, it's an ad for hemorrhoid cream before I see the video I wanna see. They're, they're not making that correlation. They're just dealing with 30 seconds Most of well, ads until they see the, the product that they wanna see. And that's, those ads don't really work very much, but people still buy them and do them. So that's a, a model for now. It's just about, well, it's, <laughs> it's the, that is the current model and the way that most people are figuring out how to get money off it is, how do I make my brand valuable enough that someone wants to pay? That's all the record label's well, doing. Well, that's it. The main thing is you have a brand where the, the audience says, I will happily buy your CD or download your song and pay for it. I will happily pay for this. I'll happily give you money to do the next thing because I like what you do. I'll happily invest in your crowdsourcing and donate to that. I think, personally, I think that's romanticizing. Because I'm supporting, and no. some people do get by with this. Some people do, but I think that if you, that's not a business model. That's usually uh, a one-time thing, or maybe it's a couple times thing, but it's not a business model. It's not something that's, that turns over, you can't make a career You out don't of that. trust the fans enough to want to support the artist on an ongoing basis. No, it's not about trust, it's about recognizing the value of music. And, the, and also the attention span of the, the audience, right? It's not about trust, it's about the fact that, you know, people want to live their lives and they want music to be the soundtrack to that the idea of investing so much emphasis on hey can you give me more money again as a precursor to making the music so that and then I, that that crowdsourcing thing if you're a real fan will you support me yeah if you're a real fan Pay will you support front. me yeah but but if if that's the case this is why it's not a good business model because it limits your fan base to just the fans that you have and you keep going back to them and saying hey would you send me you know give me more money to make the music and then maybe it grows a little bit on the sides as they start to show their friends but in terms of getting it out there and, and exponentially growing it's not a good business model because you need to that's why advertising uh can work in that way because here's the thing if you had monster energy drink or rockstar energy drink come to you and say hey we love what you do and we actually want we recognize that you are reaching fans that we don't have access to. So what we want to do is take your stuff, 
put Rockstar affiliated in some way so that all of your guys see Rockstar, but we're also gonna put it out more than that. So all of these other people who are just gonna see the Rockstar ad energy drink are gonna hear your music now. It's as simple as like, there's an, there's an ad on TV with the, uh, the song playing and they put little Chiron down the bottom. Here's the name of the band and the name of the song. Buy it on iTunes. Just that is a big deal.